There are many different types of ground gear used today, ranging from chain fastened direct to the fishing line, grass ropes, rope rounded, rubber discs, bobbins and wheels of all sizes, and rock hoppers. The function of the ground gear is to keep the trawl on the seabed and to protect the fishing line and netting from damage. Any ground gear can be worked with any trawl. The ground fished will determine the type of ground gear used. Mud, sand, stones, hard and rocky. The type of net used depends on the species of fish sought after, although some trawls have to be carefully designed and rigged if using light ground gears where good ground contact is needed. The following video shows a selection of gears, although many variations are used in the industry to suit all grounds and types of fisheries and the vessels which have to handle them. Looking first at the chain rig. Putting the chain directly onto the fishing line is probably the simplest type of ground gear and easiest to rig. With the weight being attached directly to the fishing line, very good ground contact is made. Consequently, this rig is best suited to clean ground, otherwise stones and other bottom debris will be forced into the trawl. Mud would also cause a problem, as the chain would dig in too much. This rig is used for fishing hard on the bottom, in particular for shrimp and sole. When rigged for shrimp, chain would be put on tight along the fishing line, so the bosom just falls the aft side of the chain. However, when rigging for sole, the chain tends to be put on in bites. Because the fishing line is hard down, the sittings attaching the chain to the line may have to be protected from chafing out by a small rubber disc being placed foreside of the sitting. Another method is to reeve an old rope around the fishing line, and this is also used on other ground gears. Here we can see that as the chain drags along the seabed, especially in the bosom, it pulls the fishing line very close to the seabed. Turning now to the grass rope gear. The rope is put on in bites to the fishing line and weighted by leads or chain which pull the fishing line very close to the seabed, but do not dig in as much as the chain foot rope. And this rig is therefore used for prawn trawls working on muddy grounds. The grass rope and leads will trail slightly behind the fishing line in the bunt and bosom sections, preventing mud being forced over the fishing line and into the trawl. Again, an old rope around the fishing line prevents sittings being chafed through as good ground contact is made. The fishing line along the wings may not be so tight down as in the bosom area, but the mud cloud caused by the grass rope tends to stop fish going under the ground gear. Grass ropes on fish trawls tend to be lighter on the ground because of the extra flotation used to increase the headline height needed for the higher swimming round fish. To prevent stones and rubbish being forced into the net, the rope rounded rig is often used. Winding an old rope around the chain or wire increases the diameter of the ground gear, which allows the gear to pass over the stones instead of digging under them. The rope itself tends to absorb or hold sand and mud particles, which increases its weight and helps to keep it on the seabed. 
whilst chains can be added around the rope to further increase its weight if required. These ground gears are made fast to the fishing line by short rope strops or links of chain, which hold the fishing line very close to the ground gear. Longer toggles are sometimes used in the bosom area to allow the fishing line to fall well behind the ground gear, allowing any stones which are picked up to fall between the gap. An alternative way to increase the diameter of the ground gear is to add rubber discs to the chain or wire. The discs are obtainable from about 1.5 inches to 6 inches diameter. However, larger discs are made, but these are normally used as bobbins, with the smaller discs spacing them out along the ground gear. Because the discs are made from old tyres, they have a lot of canvas within the rubber and this causes the discs to be very light in water when fishing. Although they may appear heavy when being handled on deck, they can lose up to 95% of their weight when lowered into water, as they become almost buoyant. Consequently, if mounted on wire, then chain may have to be added to the rubbers to keep the rig in contact with the seabed. Other methods of increasing weight, such as placing lead rings in between the rubber discs, can also be used. Notice here how light the ground gear is on the bottom. This rig is much heavier and therefore in good contact with the seabed, causing large sand clouds. For working harder ground, the diameter of the ground gear may have to be increased even more by incorporating large discs every so often along the gear, particularly in the bunt and bosom sections. The harder the ground being fished, the larger the wheels or bobbins will need to be. The toggles, length of chain, or for smaller gears, a heavy sitting or strop, are used to connect the fishing line to the ground gear. The larger the bobbins or wheels, the longer the toggles will need to be. This causes, on larger gears, a substantial gap between the fishing line and ground gear, allowing fish to escape. To prevent this, the fishing line can be slackened out, which drops the fishing line the aft side of the bobbins and therefore closes the gap. If the fishing line is pulling forward of the ground gear, other problems may occur, as the bobbins or wheels pick up the belly netting as they turn. To allow free movement of the fishing line in respect to the bobbins, a dummy fishing line is used. This is a second fishing line, which is put through the last link of the toggles and then made fast to the original fishing line. The toggles can now slide between each sitting, allowing the bobbins to be pulled forward or slacked back. Bobbins can be made of steel, solid rubber or plastic. Steel bobbins are used by the larger vessels. They are hollow to reduce their weight, but can become too light when worn. Solid rubber bobbins are also used on larger vessels and have the advantages of retaining more of their weight when in water and cause less damage to wooden decks. Hollow plastic free flooding bobbins are much lighter to handle on deck, making them more suitable for use on the smaller vessels. Here we can see the gap between the fishing line and the bobbins when the two are made the same length. This cross section shows how the fishing line lies directly above the bobbin and creates a gap through which fish can escape. 
This sequence shows the fishing line pulled forward of the bobbins, which can cause damage to the net. This cross-section helps to show how the bobbin can cause chafing against the net as the rig is pulled along the seabed. So, to solve the problems of fish escaping and of chafing the net, the fishing line has now been slacked back or made longer. This cross-section shows how putting the fishing line to the aft side of the bobbins can close the gap through which fish could escape, and also reduces the risk of damage to the net. Finally, the rockhopper rig is also designed for the hard ground, but unlike the bobbins and wheels, the discs are stamped out of tyres and rigged so as not to turn. Because the rubbers are packed onto the ground chain or wire very tight, and the fact that the discs do not turn, the rig is allowed to bounce over obstructions rather than roll over them. To stop the discs turning, there is a second hole at the top of the disc through which the traveller passes. The traveller can be made of chain, wire or combo, depending on the size of rock hopper and weight needed. It is essential when rigging up with rock hopper gear that the ground chain or wire and the traveller are made length for length. Should the ground chain start to wear and stretch, all the strain will come off the ground chain and onto the traveller, which will start to pull the fishing line over the top of the large discs, causing chafing and damage to the net, as with the bobbin gears. In order to prevent this, both ground chain and traveller should be pulled out tight and made length for length, with the lengths being checked periodically during fishing so that any difference can be taken out. As previously mentioned, because there is a lot of canvas in this kind of disc, they lose about 95% of their weight in water, whereas rubber bobbins and wheels only lose about 80%. When changing from bobbin gear to rock hopper, chain may have to be added to compensate, depending on the type of trawl being used. Some trawls are specially designed to overcome this problem. Connecting fishing line to hoppers is done either by a toggle or by making the fishing line fast directly to the traveller, therefore closing the gap between fishing line and the rubber discs on the ground chain, which prevents fish from escaping. Chain can be added to lighter gears, to stop sole and other fish, which are tight down on the seabed, from escaping under the gear. So, finally, we have seen how the different types of ground gear can be best rigged for the different types of seabed. Following the guidelines that we have demonstrated will help you to ensure that fishing is done with maximum effect, whilst keeping the risk of net damage to a minimum.